Hi, I'm Casey Ferris. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Today we're talking about Qualifiers 101. What the heck is a qualifier? What does that do? We're gonna get into that in a second. But by the way, if you are just getting into color grading, make sure to check out our video course, Professional Color Grading in DaVinci Resolve. We start at the very basics and then we build on all of those concepts to kind of look at all the professional techniques and all the kind of best practices for doing color grading for your projects. You can download footage, follow along, and learn all about how the color page works in Resolve. And anytime they update Resolve to a new version, we're going to update this class. So it's pretty cool. You buy it once and you get to learn whatever the newest version of Resolve is. Pretty freaking cool. Make sure to check that out. I have a link right here and a link in the description, but let's take a look at qualifiers in the color page. Here in the middle palette of the color page, we have our qualifier. If you click on this little eyedropper thing, that will bring up the qualifier palette. So what the heck does a qualifier do? Well, it is a way to select certain colors in the image so that you can do stuff with them. There are a few different kinds of qualifiers and you can generally select things by hue, saturation, and luminance. So if I wanted to say, grab these kind of pinkish red parts of his headphones, I can go to a new node and then click and drag on this red part right here. And if I go up to the upper left-hand corner of our viewer and click on this little magic wand icon, that will turn on highlight mode and it will just show the things that I have selected. Now this selection is really noisy. There's all kinds of other stuff here. And so we can adjust our selection down here in the qualifier palette. And I think the best way to start this out is to turn off our hue, saturation or luminance and just see if it's helping. So hue does a lot. Saturation doesn't really do much of anything and luminance isn't really doing a whole lot either. It's taking out some of the brighter parts, but whatever. So let's get our hue working first. Let's take this width slider down. As I take this down, this is selecting a smaller slice of the colors in the image. So now we're only selecting these kind of reddish orange colors. I'll widen this out and I can move my center around until I get a pretty clean selection of just what I want for these headphones. Then from there, I can do something like turn on our luminance here. And that's how you would select just a certain kind of range of colors. Now, once you have this selection, there are different ways to kind of clean this up. One thing that I like to do, first of all, is go to pre-filter and just push that up a little bit because that usually will just really do a lot of work. If you push that up just a tiny bit, it'll kind of take out the noise. And now we have a much kind of cleaner selection. Then we could also clean the black, which is just gonna get rid of the little dotty parts in the areas that we aren't selecting. Clean white will do kind of the same thing, but for the areas we are selecting, and those are kind of the main controls. Now that we have those selected, I can switch back to regular mode here. And whatever I do in this node is only going to happen for the things that we have selected. So if I want to change the hue, I can take this hue and roll this around and make those kind of pinker headphones. The only problem with doing it this way is that because I have so much selected here, it is going to change the hue of anything that I have selected. So what we really like to do with a qualifier is limit it with a window. So I can switch to the windows palette and maybe I'll just draw a little shape around each of these headphones like this. Hit control T to track it. Turn off our highlight mode here. Maybe make this a little bigger. And now it's kind of sticking to those headphones. Do the same thing over here. Control T. It's gonna track those headphones. And now we can just control the color of our headphones here by using our qualifier and our window together. Now we can see this isn't really selecting everything. So we can go back to our qualifier, maybe widen this out a little bit, maybe push the center this way to kind of get a little bit better of a selection. It really depends on how far you want to take something, how much you want to adjust it. If you find that it's not selecting an area, you can also go to the qualifier down here and hit this picker add. And I can grab parts like that. And a lot of the time, if you have it limited with a window, it will do a pretty good job. So here's what we have selected and here's how it looks. Pretty cool. Now, changing a hue of something is something that you could do with the HSL curves. In fact, I would recommend using the HSL curves because it generally takes less time and gives you a better result. So why would you use a qualifier versus the HSL curves? Well, I don't know. Oh, snap a -doo. Okay, I do know, I'll, I'll tell you. You generally want to use a qualifier if you want to do something other than just transform the hue, saturation, or luminance of something. Like for instance, we might want to do something like put a qualifier on his skin here and just kind of select the parts that make sense. Maybe some of the lighter parts of the skin. We could limit this with a window like this. 
go to my tracker and track back and forth. And now we have a rough selection of his skin here that we could do something like take the midtone detail down to soften it or push it up to make him look a little bit older, rougher. We can make those adjustments on his skin just using this qualifier. So here's before and here's after. This is something that you can really only do with the qualifier because what you're really doing is determining a selection and you can use anything in the color palettes to adjust that selection. Whereas the HSL curves, I can only do something like select a hue and then transform the hue or select a hue and transform the luminance. Here we can use anything that we could put on this node. So I can even use my custom curves and kind of brighten up his face or even add a little contrast, take the saturation down and just kind of isolate just his face here. So that's kind of a great way to think about it. There are a ton of controls here for the qualifier, probably way too much to go over. One thing worth noting though, is that up here in the little buttons next to the reset button, there are different kinds of qualifiers. So you can select things by hue, saturation, or luminance. You can also do red, green, and blue. You could also do just the luminance. There's also the 3D qualifier, which is kind of a complicated thing to describe, but what it really means is for some things, you can make a selection and it comes out a little bit cleaner. So now we have just those reds and it's selecting those colors in a different way that make it a little bit easier to isolate them. So now if we switch our hue, it gives us a little bit nicer selection. Of course, we'd still have to limit that with a window, but you get the idea. So there's a little crash course on the qualifiers palette here in the color page. Hey, if you want to check out that training, make sure to click that link there. We also have it down below. Thank you so much for hanging with me. Hey, that's really cool. I hope that you enjoy my qualifications. Get it? Qualifications? Because it's a qualifier. You see what I did there? You see. You, you thought it was funny. You did a little smile. You did one of these. You went.